Okay, let's try another OCHEM practice exam. So the first one, use IUPAC nomenclature to write the systematic name of the following alkanes. So we need to name this thing, and we have a cyclic molecule, right? So it looks like, right, this looks like a long linear molecule, but look at this, we got a, a five-membered ring. So this is actually the parent chain here, and these are substituents. So what do we have? We have cyclopentane, right? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are hexyl groups. These are very large uh, straight chain alkyl substituents. Now let's number this thing. We've got to number the ring. And remember, with a cyclic compound, we always number so as to give the lowest set of locants possible. So we can choose either of these as carbon one, right? One of the ones with the hexyl groups has to be carbon one. And then we will necessarily number so as to give the other occurring sooner. So we, if we do number one like that, we got to go clockwise. Right, that's how we got to do it. And so what we know is we have one three dihexyl, right? We've got one three dihexyl cyclopentane because this is a five membered ring with hexyl groups on carbons one and three. So that is the lowest set of locants that you can get. But we're not quite done. We have to talk about stereochemistry because these are chiral centers, right? And, uh, so let's go ahead and assign uh, some stereochemistry. So let's put in our implied hydrogens to make things a little bit easier for us. And let's go ahead and do this one first. So what will be the highest priority? Well, uh, over here, this is clearly carbon. This is clearly priority four. And now the rest is a little bit tricky, right? We don't want to immediately assign the substituent as top priority because this is carbon, carbon, carbon. This is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen. This is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen. This is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen. So let's go one more. This one is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen. This one is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen. Still a tie. This one is attached to hydrogen, carbon, carbon. So actually this direction is the top priority. Then if we go one more, this is still attached to hydrogen, hydrogen, but finally this one gets to carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And so this direction is actually number two, and it is the case that this substituent is priority three. So remember, with the Conningwood prelog convention, we have to put our blinders on and go one atom at a time and see what they're connected to in the event of a tie. So we have the lowest priority away from us. We have one, two, three, like this, we're gonna go like that, and so this is clearly clockwise and R. So we have one R, we can say one R right there. Uh, and now let's pick a different color here, how about green? And uh, we're gonna say clearly hydrogen is, uh, is lowest priority once again, but then the same thing is gonna apply. This is actually gonna be the lowest priority because it's straight chain and with every carbon, we still have two hydrogens that it's attached to, right? So every carbon is attached to one carbon and then two hydrogens. So this is actually lowest priority. It is the direction towards this other substituent that is the top priority because it occurs soonest that we get to a carbon that is attached to two other carbons instead of just one. So we're gonna go priority one over here and we're gonna go priority two over here. So once again, whenever we have this situation where the lowest priority group is towards us, we can just go ahead and do the trick where we swap it with the one behind. So let's uh, swap it with this. As long as we have the lowest priority group away from us, we can assign RNS. So we'll, we'll pretend this is the dash and this is the wedge. And if we were to do that, we would say one, two, three, going counterclockwise, which looks like S, but we have to invert our answer because we inverted it to assess and we will get R. So this is going to be uh, one, one R, three R, one three dihexyl cyclopentane. So that's a little bit of a uh, little bit of cyclic nomenclature and some RNS, a little bit of a tricky one too. Okay. Uh, so we've got this, we've got this alkyl, uh, a tertiary alkyl bromide, and then we've got this uh, alkene product here. So what are we going to do to affect this transformation? Uh, well, let's, clearly we're going to do an elimination, right? Eliminations make alkenes, but what kind of elimination did we do? Well, we clearly, we got one of these protons. Let's go ahead, let's put CH2 
and uh, put an H there. So we need a base that is going to grab one of these methyl protons rather than one of these internal protons. So we're going to need the bulkiest base possible to ensure that we're going to get that. And so let's, uh, let me keep it to blue actually. Uh, so let's just use tert butoxide. Tert butoxide is our classic E2 promoter that always goes Hoffman, right? We know that we're going to do this and we're going to get that pi bond there, and we're going to get the product we want. So this is E2, and we're going to get the Hoffman product, right? We're going to get that Hoffman product, uh, as we can see, uh, if it was covered up before, uh, we can see that we've got this terminal alkene. We're, we definitely proceeded by Hoffman. If we used a sterically unhindered base, we would have gotten the pi bond internally. We would have gotten that in there. It would be a different product. So we did use our, uh, our classic bulky base uh, to promote E2 via, uh, to get the Hoffman product. So that's that one. Okay, so we've got D2. Now, what is D? This uh, Students are sometimes confused by this, but remember, D is deuterium, right? And deuterium is just an isotope of hydrogen. So chemically, it behaves the same as protium or the isotope of hydrogen that we are used to looking at. So the chemistry is not going to change. The only reason that we specify deuterium is so that we have to draw where those are on the product, right? We have to be able to show where those are because they are different isotopically from the other hydrogen atoms. And so we are doing hydrogenation. We are, uh, because deuterium is hydrogen, we are placing a deuterium atom on each of the carbons that are participating in that pi bond. So what do we get? Uh, and also, this is a syn addition because this is heterogeneous catalysis. So catalytic uh, palladium, uh, we've got the substrate coming down onto the catalytic surface, and then the hydrogen atoms, uh, the hydrogen atoms add uh, from the same side because they are attached to the same solid surface. And so we know that, that they have to be attached to the same side. And so let's just go ahead and do that, and we can say that the, deuter the deuterium atoms are going to be sin to one another, uh, sorry, the deuterium atoms will be cis to one another in the product because it was a syn addition reaction. So syn describes the stereospecificity of the reaction, and then cis describes the, uh, the, uh, the spatial orientation with respect to one another on, that, on, the, on, the, on the structure, on the molecule. So cis describes the molecule, syn describes the reaction. This is a syn addition, and we've got the deuterium atoms on the same side of the product, cis to one another because of that. So we do have to show them, and we do have to show the correct stereochemistry uh, from this hydrogenation. So that's that one. Some multiple choice. What is the electron domain geometry of phosphorus in phosphorus tribromide? So what is that? We've got phosphorus tribromide. Remember that phosphorus has five valence electrons. It is an analog of nitrogen, and so it behaves like nitrogen. Uh, and uh, so phosphorus is going to have three bonds to bromine and a lone pair. Therefore, this is the geometry here. Right? It's going to be just like ammonia, essentially. So what is the electron domain geometry? Well, we've got one, two, three, four electron domains. This is sp3 hybridized. Therefore, we have a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. Now, to continue this line of thinking, what is the molecular geometry of phosphorus tribromide? So molecular geometry differs from electron domain geometry in that we are ignoring lone pairs. So we're not, well, I mean, we're not ignoring it. We're, this is the shape it takes on. But in terms of the bonding behavior, we're just looking at the phosphorus atom and these three bromines and acknowledging that this is a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry or shape, right? So this is tetrahedral just like methane or water or ammonia, but those molecules have different molecular geometries because of the differing numbers of lone pairs that they have. So tetrahedral electron domain geometry Trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. That would be the difference here looking at the same molecule. What is the hybridization of the two oxygens in this molecule? So we've got a methyl group, and then we've got CH2, and then we've got C, and now C is attached to O2. Now, whenever we see O2, it, it, this can be a little confusing. It's not O and then another O. It's just a shorthand of this. 
right? We know that we have a carbonyl and another oxygen. So that's the trick with condensed formula notation is being able to recognize certain groups and know, knowing what they mean, what they indicate about the line notation. After the second oxygen, we've got CH2, CH3. So this is an ester, and we really want to draw that out, right? This, it can be confusing to, to try to assess hybridization looking at this. So we had to know that O2 meant this, and if you didn't know that, you would probably eventually find out because if you tried to put two oxygens, then you'd be missing two hydrogens over here. Right? It wouldn't, the Lewis dot structure wouldn't work out unless you drew it this way. But, so we do have an ester. We want to know the hybridization of the two oxygens. So this one has these two lone pairs. This one has these two lone pairs. And so this guy has three electron domains, one, two, three, so sp2. This one has uh, four electron domains, one, two, three, four, right? Two bonding pairs, two lone pairs. So this one is sp3. You could argue that it has some sp2 character because it is involved in resonance here, but the other resonance structure involves a formal positive charge on this guy and a formal negative charge on this guy. This resonance structure is has all neutral atoms, so it is dramatically more contributing than the other resonance structure. So while it is correct to say that this has a little bit of sp2 character, it is predominantly sp3 character, and this is predominantly sp2 character. So I don't think that they were going to get too far into the weeds uh, here because it is a quantitative thing, right? It is it is correct to say that this has more sp3 character than sp2. So I would I would argue that this answer is one is sp3 and the other is sp2, right? It's not the completely full answer. The the reality is somewhere in between, but it is more correct to say this than to say that either of them are both one or the other. That doesn't make sense at all, right? They're not both one or the other. There's there's somewhere in between. So that's definitely the answer they were fishing for there. And that's that one. Okay, use. Uh, we're going to do another IUPAC nomenclature here. And so what are we going to do? We got to uh, find the longest carbon chain. We've got an alkene, so we know the longest chain has to include that double bond. And it's got to be the longest one possible. So we're going to go like this. We've got to include that group up there because that's how we get the longest carbon chain. Now, how do we number this thing? We've got to number this thing so as to specifically give the pi bond occurring soonest, because alkene takes priority over alkyl and halogen. So it wouldn't matter if there was a, a some other alkyl functional group sooner from this side. Uh, in this case, there isn't even, but if there was a functional group on carbon two, it still would be numbered left to right because we want the pi bond occurring soonest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have uh, we have an octene, and we specifically have three octene, right? Because uh, the pi bond begins on carbon three. Now we also have a methyl group on carbon three. We have a methyl group on carbon six. And then what else do we have? We have, uh, we, we, first of all, we need, to, uh, we need to talk about the configuration of the pi bond. So the configuration of the pi bond is either E or Z. And so what is the higher priority group on this carbon? That would be ethyl over methyl. Uh, for con angle prelog, right? We know that carbon and carbon tie, but this carbon is bound to three hydrogens. This carbon is bound to two hydrogens and one carbon. So this one wins. And then over here, alkyl beats hydrogen. So alkyl and alkyl on the same side, this is a Z alkene, right? And then we also have one chiral center on carbon six, right? So uh, what are we, uh, how, what are we going to do there? Well, we got to, uh, we've got to, uh, get the absolute configuration. So uh, we've got an implied hydrogen that is definitely priority four. Now, once again, resist the temptation to just look at this group on the wedge and label that number one. It is actually not the case. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens. So it is the lowest priority group of the remaining three. Now over here, we've got carbon, carbon, those tie, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. So they still tie. We have to go one more carbon. This carbon is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This carbon is attached to hydrogen, carbon, carbon. Remember, both pi and sigma bonds are attached to carbon, so we count that in Conningold prelog as two carbons. So carbon, carbon, hydrogen beats hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this is, uh, sorry, that is going to be priority one, and this is going to be priority two. 
and we already have the lowest priority group away from us, so we can go one, two, three, that is clockwise and therefore R. So we have six R. So we put it all together, let's say Z first, and then we'll say six R, and then we have two methyl groups, so it's actually three, six, dimethyl, three, octene. So we have to talk about the absolute configuration of the pi bond. We have to talk about the absolute configuration of that one stereo center. We have to list the methyls together because they're the same group with that prefix di. And then we have to say it is an octene because there's eight carbons with the pi bond beginning at carbon three. So that will be the name for this molecule. And uh, that's the end of this exam. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.